Hey everyone, Tom Brown here, Executive Director of Operations in uh, Brewer Science. And this is part of a series that we're doing and it's called The Three Pillars of Impact. Uh, in the last episode, we talked about courage to challenge. Now we're going to talk about expect excellence. And then next time we'll talk about empower others. Um, so let's go, uh, expect excellence. So don't confuse expect excellence with seeking perfection. Okay? It's not about being perfect but it's a mindset that focuses on the journey and the approach more than the outcome. So when I get into this, we're going to talk about kind of three things, right? One is don't confuse the goal with the process. The other one is expect excellence in yourself and others, and then create a shared vision. So don't confuse the goal with the process. I mean, this is difficult, right? Because um, James Clear in his book, The Atomic Habits, again, a great book, go take a look at it. Um, he focused on the fact that a goal is really about the short-term outcome at a point in time versus focusing on the system or the process that leads to recurring success. So again, the trick on this is the goal is really time dependent and it's kind of time bound, it's finite. But if you focus on the process, it's really about that success that's going to recur time and time again. Um, we, sports analogy, I'm a big sports guy, so we talk about uh, uh, trust the process. Right? If you trust the process, winning will take care of itself when it's right, right. Sometimes you come up against a team that's just better. So if we use the scoreboard as a metric or as a goal to win that game, hey, there's some teams you just are not going to beat. They're a better team. They're more physical. They're, they have more skill. They have a better process, a better coach. It's just not going to happen, right? Um, and that's fine. That's, that's life. But if you can improve and you can develop and you can play your game, do it the right way with the right effort, that's really what you're looking for as a coach and as a leader. You want to see that progress over time. That's going to put them in a position to win, in a position to compete to win. And that, that's really what we have to do. We, and you see a lot of times on individuals, again, coming back to scores, where all they look at is who's your leading scorer, and they think that's your best player. A lot of times it's not. They're just the person that's the recipient of the process. It, maybe it's that person that moves the ball or sets the screen or does the dirty work out there, the glue guy we call them that helps your team be successful. So again, it's really important that you don't confuse the goal with the process. And again, I like to talk about the pursuit of excellence as a mindset, it's kind of a culture. And, and just a little thing to throw in there, um, a lot of people say, hey, never be satisfied, right? That, that's a big push you see on people, never be satisfied with where you are. And the sentiment, I, I got you, I'm with you. But if you don't take time to enjoy it, to, to take satisfaction in what you've accomplished or the effort you've put out, I mean, that, 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 that's bad, right? Because at some point you're going to start getting burnt out and, and you're never going to take that chance to enjoy what you have and it's always going to be something has to be better and you're going to push yourself. You're going to see a lot of burnout, especially in the young folks. So we take time to celebrate, right? Every team can celebrate a victory. You celebrate something you've done. Man, be, be happy about that. But then take your satisfaction of that continued growth to say, hey, I'm better today than I was yesterday. Again, don't, don't look at it as something that you're not accomplishing. Look at it as something that you accomplished, celebrate it, and then move on and try and accomplish a little bit more. Um, so now we're going to talk about expecting excellence in yourself, but also in others. And now, coming back, I mentioned before about the pursuit of excellence. And so I like to distinguish between seeking excellence and pursuing excellence. Now, it may not be a big deal for a lot, maybe semantics, but for me, it really, really hits home. I, I use this as a great way to kind of see the difference. So seeking, right, you see it, I'm thinking about that's always like you're seeking an end state. You're trying to get to an outcome, right? You're trying to achieve excellence. So when I think about seeking excellence, it's like you're trying to find it. That's kind of how I view those things, like it's something to find. Where if it's pursuing, I think of pursuing as the pursuit, right? The journey, the chase. And for that, and it's all about what you're doing, right? It, it's about the pursuing, the, the activity, the, the thing that's moving you forward. So that's kind of how I look at it, is seeking and pursuing versus achieving something, acquiring something, the goal, versus pursuing it, which is really about the journey and the process. So when we do those things, man, communication about what excellence is, that's fundamental. So that definition, and we're going to talk about that um, later on, on Empower Others, but we also kind of touched on that a little bit um, in, in the first one too, on that courage challenge about how you communicate, how you ask your questions. You, you got to make sure that you have this connection, right? That you know where you're going, the journey's understood. Because um, if not, man, you're going to have a lot of frustration and then that's going to make it difficult when you're trying to, to measure excellence. Uh, high standards, accountability, man, that's tough, man. It's not always popular to do those things, right? 
the kids don't like the coaches until later on. Right? You don't like your teacher because they're making you do certain things. You don't like your boss because they're expecting to, to do certain things and maybe you're not equipped yet. But later on, you're going to look back and go, man, those people, they, they expected that of me. They, they had high standards for me. And you're going to appreciate what they've done. And that's why that courage to challenge, that has to be established first. Um, and then obviously having positional power helps when, you, when you're putting that expect excellence out there in that high level. But um, the thing you got to watch out too is you could also have uh, get pushback. You get jealousy. You get resentment if you try and push too more of that, uh, too much of that uh, high standards and that ex excellence. So again, you got to balance that between what you expect of yourself and then how you expect that of other people. This, the create and shared vision, this, this is big for me. This, this really kind of connects all of these things. And I like to think about a, you're painting a picture, right? So I'm going to paint a picture of what I think excellence looks like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how the other people, how they fit into that picture, right? And, and it's not just that now they know how they fit in the picture. I'm then going to invite them to help me paint that picture, right? So then we get a shared vision. It really is a picture that we've all done together. Now you got buy-in, right? Because they see it. And they see how they fit in there with you and with their teammates. Man, if you can do that, that is really putting you forward on something that you can all get behind. Um, when we were going to be a world-class manufacturer, we kind of set this goal, said, hey, we're going to go from being this so-so eh, manufacturer to really this world-class manufacturer that's going to get all this top-level business and these leading semiconductor manufacturers. So what I did is I got my team together, right? All my direct reports and other key p personnel. So we had different hierarchy of people in there. And we all met and we said, okay, what does it mean to be world-class? What we didn't focus on was the, the goals, right? The metrics. We didn't focus on these key performance indicators um, that said, hey, you have to have a scrap level of this, or you have to have a productivity level of this. Your operational efficiency is this. We didn't look at any of those things. What we said is, what do they look like? How do they behave? What do world-class companies embrace? What are their characteristics and traits? We talked about what it would look like, that, that vision, that picture of world-class uh, manufacturing. And then every month, we'd have our meeting, we'd get together, read through things, or you know, I'd give a presentation. And then I would read verbatim, line for line, which I never do in a presentation, and I would read it every time because I said it was that important, that we were all on the same page, that this is what our shared vision looks like. And then as we progressed, then I'd start opening up and I'd ask the audience, say, hey, you know, there's 200 people in this, this uh, auditorium we have. And I'm saying, hey, did we do this? Did we hit the shared vision right here? And they would say yes. And if they did, we'd celebrate. We'd clap. We'd like, hey, way to go, guys. They, uh, we're, we're, we're doing that. If we didn't, then we started asking why. We'd have a conversation. Again, 200 people in a room. And people would share ideas. Well, hey, I don't think it's important anymore. Well, why not? So we'd talk about it. Sometimes we'd change that vision because things changed. Other times we're like, no, let's get an action plan together to fix it. And typically, somebody would volunteer to lead it. Again, because they were engaged and they saw themselves as being part of that shared vision. So... Really, it comes down to it. When we're thinking about um, excellence, right, we got to expect excellence in the very beginning, right? So the shared vision is great. We got that aligned. We got the people on the journey. Everyone's going down the, uh, the same path, which is, which is wonderful. They're all helping each other. Um, and again, when you're part of a team, it helps, right? You're not alone. You've you got people to support you. They got your back, right? You're working on it together. They're helping you carry the load. Um, but what happens when you got someone new, right? So again, it's easier when you came up in it and you created this excellence, right? And you're part of that process. But what about when you bring a new player on the team, right? You got a new classmate. So you got to be upfront with them. You got to be clear. They got to know what they're getting into and what you expect of them. And that, again, can be challenging. We've already worked on that though, right? How the courage to challenge, how you can engage them. And then the other thing I want to leave you with is, okay, who do you surround yourself with, right? So when you're bringing these people on, you know, when you look at who you're around, your six people that are around you, who you spend your most time with, a lot of times that's going to reflect you. That's going to reflect your potential, your values. So you got to take a look and say, am I bringing the right people on to this team? Am I hanging out with the right friends after school? Um, is my workplace the right people I'm surrounding myself that are they're going to achieve the similar things that I want to achieve? So those are things we've got to take a look at, especially when you're going to expect excellence uh, from others. Expect excellence. It's the second pillar of impact. And again, we feel that's critical in building the foundation of success. So the next time we talk, we're going to talk about empower others. And that's the third pillar of impact. Um, if you get a chance, visit our website, brewerscience.com. Check out more of the Learning Lab videos or find out more about our company and the things we do. Uh, 
If you like what I had to say, take a look at my blog, beyondtoday.blog. Uh, i got a lot of things in there about leadership, about sports, about life, growth. Hopefully it will be something that you can take away. I want to thank everyone. And remember that the journey of excellence is not easy, and it's not, not for everyone. It really isn't. Um, but it's not about achieving goal or hitting the deadline. It's about the process of growth, right? And it's about being better today than we were yesterday. It's the pursuit of the expectation of excellence that really creates the impact beyond today. Thanks, everyone.